like deciding to read a book series that is really long, it can be a little daunting. But you made a good call. One of the most important things you need to remember when you're trying to pick a counselor is that most counselors are going to be able to work with you, but not all of them will necessarily work for you. I know, it's pretty annoying. Of course, there's a lot of different kinds of experts out there that can help. My bias, unsurprisingly, is that going for a licensed professional and certified counselor, um, LMFT, LPC, there's everything always starts with L if they're licensed, but it's good to double check and see what kind of licensure or certification they have. Um, That licensed professional has spent years of education and then getting practical experience in the field to actually get to the point where no matter how charming and delightful you may be, and no matter how cool and put together they may seem, the moment that you and your counselor begin working together, it's a business relationship. And that business is you, you know, Ultimately, if you're feeling better by visiting a psychic, talking with a, uh, a Reiki healer, uh, receiving kiatsu, or just chatting with your friends, awesome. You should do that. But there is something to be said for working with somebody who has been trained in different kinds of specific methodologies that are designed to help you and who is guaranteed not to share information with anybody else. So... Finding one is relatively easy. It's the same way you found this video. You just go online, search in your local area. Most counselors do prefer to actually work in person as opposed to remotely, but you do what you can. If you're okay with you know, sharing the knowledge, ask any friends and family if they've seen somebody and who they can recommend to you. A good reference is a great way of increasing your likelihood that you're going to get somebody that works for you. Now, if you need something a little more specific than typing counselors near me in Google, Psychology Today is one of the greatest resources for finding a good therapist. Uh, you can type in your local area and they will give you lots of different options. Um, other options also include Open Path, Being Seen, or Better Help for finding what things and people that will be nearby you. But a lot of people tend to forget to contact their own insurance first. Um, by talking to your insurance, you can usually just find a list with your insurance's website that will dictate all the counselors that they are that are on what's called their panel. That is to say that they will pay for working with you. It's good to also note that most insurances really suck at taking people off of those lists. So make sure you confirm with the, whoever you are talking with that they take the insurance that you are bringing to them. Any decent counselor agency is gonna be able to listen to the issue that's facing you and be able to establish a quick consult with the counselor for you. This will probably be less than 20 minutes. That shouldn't cost you anything. If on the other hand, they're insisting you have to set up a full appointment and you have to wait a few weeks to get in, well, depending how many options you have, Put yourself on their list and ask them to call you ASAP or just walk away. If you're actually talking with your prospective counselor, they should be able to outline who they are, what their credentials are, how long they've been in business, um, how they propose to help you, and how much it's going to cost per session. This is important, especially if you have one of those insurances that kind of likes to jerk you around. You want to know what you're going to wind up paying. If you like them, then, and you like the agency, but you feel okay about it in general, do that full intake session. This, hopefully at that point, should settle you as to whether or not you want to work with that counselor or help you realize you would prefer to work with somebody else. Now, as a side note, male or female counselors don't necessarily make as much of a difference as you may think. Uh, if you feel really strongly about it, follow your gut, but I wouldn't deny a potential option that you have just because they happen to be of a different gender. You will wind up re reviewing your 
potential therapist the same way once you're in session. Okay, so now you're in session, but you realize you don't want to work with this particular counselor. That's okay. First, they should be able to provide you with a few references. Any decent therapist is going to understand that not everybody is a perfect fit, and they're not going to harbor hard feelings about it. If if, because therapists are people, you do have one that gets angry or cranky or refuses to give you references, run. Do not walk away, run. That is a person who's there to exploit you. Report them, in fact, if you need to. You can report a therapist to the uh, licensure board of the relevant state that you are in. And finally, how do you know when you are done with therapy? Well, this one's actually fairly easy. First, trust your own instinct. If you're feeling okay and you're kind of questioning why you're going to therapy, cut it down. Remember, your counselor doesn't vanish when you leave. Go enjoy the results of your hard work. Whether it's self-confidence, happiness, getting out of a bad relationship, you're the one who worked on it. You did it. A therapist will be there if you need them again.